I think that we need to be really clear that marijuana legalization is not happening because anyone is in power is suddenly becoming enlightened and they want to make sure that everyone has access to the sacred herb. What they are doing is they have found a way in declining empire to tap a source of revenue. I live in Northern California, and a lot of people, when they think of Northern California, one of the first things they think about is marijuana, because just as the south of France is known for its wine, and just as New Orleans is known for jazz, and Holland's known for tulips, and uh, Washington, D.C. is known for liars, um, the uh, Northern California is known for some of the, the, the best marijuana in the world. There has been, over the past several years, the marijuana has been increasingly legalized around the country. And this has had a paradoxical effect, or not a paradoxical effect, but it's, it's, it's really interesting because it has manifested something that this culture does so much. I'll back up a minute. Um, I have a friend up in Oregon who has been a grower since the 70s who said to me a year or two ago that he was, he had spent his whole adult life fantasizing that someday marijuana would be legal. And now that it's increasingly legal, he wishes he never would have even had that fantasy. It's been a complete disaster. And the, the movement that I'm talking about with the problems with legalization are that has been a, increasing destruction of the capacity of individual craftspeople to make a living and the increasing corporatization of the entire industry. It is a model for what has happened essentially an infinite number of times around the globe and is happening as we speak. It's a model for what happened to the Luddites in England. It is a model for what is happening to subsistence farmers around the world right now. That there has been over the last several decades, last couple of generations really, an entire culture has, has arisen in Northern California of marijuana farmers and it is so common that you can be standing in Safeway or in any store and you can hear one person talk to another about what strains they're growing or what fertilizers they use. It, it is a part of the, the culture here and this people who have been doing this, families who have been doing this for a couple generations now are being driven out of business. And it's, it's, it's very interesting because I recently uh, was reading an article in High Times, which is a marijuana advocacy magazine, really, and in another magazine, another marijuana type magazine about this. And they were saying how great this is that the price of marijuana is being driven down and in their language, uh, the growers who are inefficient are being driven out of the market. And what they mean by this is the growers who don't have economy of scale. Because what's happened in Colorado is that a very small number, a handful of growers have, have taken over the entire market, uh, the entire growing process. And they are also, and the, the, the magazine was talking about how good this is for the industry, that they are vertically integrated, by which is meant they do everything from the growing to the distribution. And this is perceived by the culture as a whole as a good thing. And that's really why I'm talking about this is because this is, again, the central movement of this culture. What has happened to small farmers, not a marijuana farmers, but small chicken farmers? What has happened to small watermelon farmers? What has happened to small strawberry farmers? It has been increasingly difficult 
for them to maintain their way of living in and to maintain an ability to make a living in the face of economies of scale. What economies of scale are, are if someone, and I just saw this in the article the other day, that if someone has already a, a grow space where they can do, where they can grow a thousand plants at a time, it's going to cost them less per plant than a backyard grower or somebody who's growing in one small room who grows 20 plants at a time. The cost per plant is going to be much lower. This is why you don't see individual tire makers. This is why you don't see individual computer manufacturers. This is why you will in the future not see individual marijuana growers. This is why you don't see all the strawberries you get are from a few companies. All the food you eat is from just a few companies. And before very long, all the marijuana that everybody smokes is going to be from just a few companies. And this has been met with resistance. This process has been going on for centuries and has been met with resistance. I want to go back and talk about the Luddites for a moment because they're just a great example of this, that the Luddites emerged from weavers, people who, who uh, wove cloth and then it was very high quality and had, they were able to make living at this for generations of being craftspeople, knowing how to, how, to, how to work that craft and how to make a fine product and how to, they pass these on to their children and they were passed on to their children. They would work at home. The entire family would be working on these processes. And what the Luddites were rebelling against was capitalism bringing in industrialized looms and turning their craft work into making them parts of interchangeable parts of a machine where they would have to work for slave labor at a at a factory where they are doing repetitive motion all day long they are no longer manifesting a craft but they are subservient to the machine and they responded by breaking the looms breaking the going in and burning the factories and the British sent in the army against them and, and hanged many of them. And so far I am both surprised and disappointed that the vibrant growing, the vibrant marijuana growing culture has not risen up against the corporatization of the marijuana industry here. It's the same process. That's what I want to emphasize is the scale is different, but this is precisely the same process that is happening in India with subsistence farmers being driven off their land. This is the same process happening in Africa with subsistence farmers being driven off their land. This is the same process manifested by that dreadful Secretary of Agriculture in the 1970s, Earl Butts, who was famous for saying, get big or get out. And the small farmers had to attempt to compete with the large industry and they were unable to do so. And this is what we're seeing again here. This is, you can always argue that this is good for consumers because the price will, to consumers will go down. But the question is, I want to back up a second. And I think that we need to be really clear that marijuana legalization is not happening because anyone is in power is suddenly becoming enlightened and they want to make sure that everyone has access to the sacred herb. What they are doing is they have found a way in declining empire to tap a source of revenue that they could not allow for the, this huge revenue stream to go untaxed. And we can argue, well, gosh, they could have made laws such that they can legalize it while protecting the small growers. But tell me when that's ever happened. When did they protect small 
farmers of any sort? When have they protected small producers of any sort? And there's no reason for them to because it's much easier to collect taxes from three big corporations than it is from 20,000 different people in the community. And I've been thinking about this a lot over the past few weeks. And one of the things I've been thinking that I, I think is kind of fascinating is that marijuana's illegality made it so it was more difficult for large interests to take over, to monopolize the entire production process. Because if a cartel tried to uh, take over all of the marijuana growth and distribution, um, the cops were there to step in at some point. There was not a realistic possibility of a cartel putting in a 10,000 acre grow in the Central Valley of California. And with legalization, those restrictions on the behavior of cartels have been taken away. It's only nowadays they aren't called cartels, they're called corporations. And really, what is the fundamental difference between a cartel and a corporation? The fundamental difference between a drug cartel and a corporation is that corporations have been able to outsource the, uh, the securities necessary for their operation to grow to the state. So cartels have their private police forces that enforce the laws associated with, the, the, that enforce no one is going to steal their, their product, whereas corporations have outsourced that at public expense to the police, to the state, to the tax board. And so the net effect for many counties in Northern California has been and is going to be a collapse of local economies. In Arcata right now, one house out of every five is a grow house. There are approximately 10,000 or 11,000 or 12,000 outdoor grows in Southern Humboldt. And we can talk, and I have talked, about the environmental costs of those grows. I'm not saying costs. But as prices are driven down, a lot of those people are going to be driven out of business. And in the, the words of Earl Butts, they'll need to get big or get out. And what's going to happen is the monopolization of production. It's going to be all taken over by RJR and Nabisco or whatever other company can afford to buy 10,000 acres and throw in industrial pot. And then I want to mention one more thing about this for right now, which is when was the last time you had a strawberry? By which I don't mean when was the last time you had an object from a grocery store that looks like a strawberry and smells kind of like a strawberry and tastes like cardboard, but when was the last time you had a real strawberry? Or when was the last time you had a watermelon? I think I am among the last generation of people, except for those who have bought from roadside stands, who's ever had a watermelon. The crap they have in grocery stores now is a toxic mimic of a watermelon. It looks like a watermelon, it doesn't really smell like a watermelon and it sure as hell doesn't taste like a watermelon. We can go through pears, peaches. When was the last time you had a real peach? When was the last time you had a real orange? And for those of you who like marijuana, just think on that and think on what the corporatization of the entire industry is going to do at every level. I just want to be really clear that yes, this is, this is, this is a dreadful thing for several counties here in Northern California and for the marijuana culture that has grown up over the last several decades. But the real point I'm trying to make here is that this is the central movement of this culture, which is the increasing centralization of all production, the increasing centralization of all forms of the economy and an a decreasing capacity 
for individuals to be able to make a living outside of the official economy. And again, I want to be really clear that we could tell this same story about the Luddites. We could tell the same story about the marijuana growers. We can tell the same story about the independent bookstores being driven out by Amazon, first Barnes and Noble and then Amazon. We can talk about independent computer store owners being driven out by Walmart. We can talk about independent grocery stores. We can talk about corner stores. We can talk about subsistence farmers. We can talk about um, anyone who is operating on a small scale. This whole legalization process is just a prime example of the central movement of this culture, which is towards centralized control to turn the entire world into one company store. Not only when was the last time you had a strawberry, but when was the last time that you had an entire meal that didn't have any genetically modified organisms in it? So if you think that legalization is not going to lead to people smoking marijuana that has octopus genes in it, you have not been paying attention to the movement of technology and capitalism and capital. Um, this marijuana will be genetically modified. It will be, um, it will follow the same trajectory that we have seen with every other industry that is corporatized.